When it comes to orchestration, one of the most common ways to use instruments is simply on their own or in a section, right? So you could have a solo violin or you could have an entire section of violins playing together. But what if you took instruments from different sections and placed them together? That's where we start to get these really beautiful combinations and create unique colors that you don't get just from those individual sections. So in this video, I wanna share with you three of my favorite combinations from different sections that create a beautiful sound that I've used personally in my own music. Let's start with the first one here. So I personally love combining violins and the flute together. Uh, one thing I think of when I'm doing combinations is the actual ranges of those instruments. So for example, the flute can play from around a middle C to quite high up, a C a few octaves higher, and the violins can go from the G below middle C to very high as well. So one pro for using these together is that they have similar ranges, meaning that they combine really, really well in terms of the registers. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the timbral similarity as well. So if you have two instruments combining together, but they have completely different tones, different timbres, they really clash in terms of their frequencies, then that's not really going to blend well. But when I'm using combinations, I like to choose instruments that have similar enough timbres so that they can combine well and then create a more of an enhanced sound rather than more of a unique sound that kind of stands out and doesn't blend together. So that being said, that's why I choose violins and flute a lot of the time. Let's just play a line here or there to hear how they sound together. And then we can also pull up or pull down the volumes of the instruments individually as well. So just a beautiful blended sound. And of course it helps that these are both from the Cinematic Studio series. So they're recorded in the same way with uh, similar timbres. Um, and then of course they're in the same hall, right? So they're gonna blend uh, really well in that regard as well. But basically you hear that they have a very complementary sort of timbre. So the strings obviously have, they have that grit because the bows are playing against the strings. So naturally you're gonna hear more of that sort of rosiny sound. And of course, there's a lot of vibrato there as well. Whereas the flute, it's all air-based. So it's a more breathy sound. It has a lot of body there as well though, a bit of creaminess that it adds to the violins that they don't get on their own. So if I soloed up the, the violins by itself, this is what it sounds like. And then when you add in the flute in there, Right, the flute adds that bit of creaminess and that body that you don't quite get uh, just having the violins on their own. So this is why you would wanna combine here or there. If you wanna enhance certain textures, you wanna add an additional dimension or some more depth to a, an existing sample, uh, choosing similar timbres to help with that is a really good idea. So that's uh, that's what I chose here. And you notice in the second half, I also pulled down the viol volume a bit from the flute pushed up the violence just a little bit because in a, in a more live orchestral context, the strings tend to be louder than a solo flute, right? They would come out a little bit louder. So in that regard, the strings, the violins are kind of leading the way, whereas the flute is sort of providing that background body or just filling up the texture a little bit more. So that is the first combination I really enjoy, violins and flute. The second one I want to touch on here is the violas and the clarinet. 
So again, I'm trying to keep in mind those two parameters. Number one is the register. The violas and the clarinet have somewhat of a similar register. They're both more mid-range focused, and they also have somewhat similar timbres as well. The clarinet is sort of like a more full-bodied flute uh, in a way, um, but giving a lot of body, a lot of, lot of big body sound to the violas. So let's kind of hear these um, together. This is what it sounds like. Right. So one really cool thing is that in a more orchestral context, the clarinets don't usually play with a lot of vibrato. So if you want that more steady sound, you want more of that sustained tone, then the clarinet can provide that background, that body to the viola sound, especially if they're playing with more vibrato, the clarinet sort of evens out the sound overall. So that's the second combination that I do enjoy using on a regular basis. And then moving into the low registers a little bit, the cellos and the solo horn or French horns in general have a really complimentary sound as well. The horns are very creamy. They, especially in the lower dynamics, without the the, the brassiness, right, the, the blaring nature of the instrument, um, they can be really warm and very mellow. So let's hear what these sound like together. So this is the cello section plus a solo horn as well. You'll notice here, I've turned down the volume, by the way, of the horn down to like minus 20 because um, CSB is a very dynamic library. So I definitely did not want it to overpower CSS. Let's maybe turn down the cellos a tad here and pull back up the the, uh, the French horn a little bit. See if that makes a difference. Right, so a very regal sound there, and the cellos are more of a supportive role in that regard. So that's the beauty of sample libraries. It's just that you can trigger the different volumes, you can push them up, push them down, and with a real orchestra, obviously you can make those directions for the musicians, but that's gonna cost you a lot of time and, and effort if you wanna experiment within the session itself, which is usually not recommended. Uh, so yeah, sample libraries are wonderful because you have that flexibility and you can just experiment with several combinations. And again, in this video, I kind of covered the ones that I personally enjoy and I've used in my music. But again, if you want more of that, uh, difference in the sound. If you don't really want them to blend together and you just want them to play together in unison, but you don't really care about if they blend or not, then you can experiment with completely different timbres and add them together, experiment with the volumes, kind of find out what you like, and then apply them to your music as well. There really is no limit when it comes to sample libraries, except usually like the recorded range or the dynamics as well. But when it comes to putting things together and trying things out, you really have a full spectrum at your hands. Let me know down below which combination was your favorite out of the three. Um, they all work in different respects, of course, but um, you know, the first one was a bit more in the high register, the second was more in the mids, the third was more in the lows. Out of the three, did you have one that you personally prefer or do you have one that you like to use on a regular basis um, that you would like to share with me as well? I'd love to hear your comments below. And obviously here you saw me using the Cinematic Studio series for all these demonstrations, but if you want my full sample library buyer's guide, including all the different developers that I use on a regular basis as well, then you can download my 
sample library buyer's guide is the first link down in the description box below. And it's a gift for checking out this video today. And uh, you can download it as a buyer's guide. So maybe you're interested in, you know, checking out a new library, you're curious about my thoughts on it, then it might be in there and you can grab it and have it on hand in case you are curious about something new. If you want to hear these orchestral combinations in real time, you want to see how I apply this to a real piece of music, then check out this video right over here. I did a deconstruction of my favorite combinations there and how I applied it to this piece of music to make it really flow and sing and create that sort of enhanced texture.